And now that Rukia had her ass kicked. Get ready, get set, let's roll! k -win. now supports the ZWP Linux DMA buff interface on Wayland, that should result in lower memory usage, and better performance for supported devices. Earlier this year, k -win also added support for NVIDIA cards on Wayland, but I haven't managed to get a running session. If I ever get that working, I will upload a video and compare with all you know what. Plasma can now set the KDE color scheme to GTK header bars, and that might sound impressive, but there are a couple of issues. First, we need to restart the apps, for changes taking effect. Second, that doesn't seem to work on Flatpak apps. Third, I'm not sure how that will play on apps with complex header bars, like Lollipop. And there is another issue, with shadows not working on xorg, but they do work under Wayland. Okular, can now open and read CB7 files, that's basically 7z compression, and in general, Okular is a pretty cool program. And moreover, Dolphin can now preview CB7 comic books. The notifications counter has been removed, and now Plasma will use a bell instead, like everyone else, that also comes in with a nice animation. Hovering will show us the number of unread notifications, but I really don't like that weird grouping on indicators, and definitely not the million tooltips, that pop up so amazingly fast. What's super nice is that we can set a timeout. And when we do, there is a red line on bell, which is very similar on what elementary does. You see that special styles on headers? Now they are implementing them on more panels, but the design is not final. And I have opened plasma settings so many times lately, that I have memorized every single option. Do you remember on my last video, the one full minute I spent complaining its settings, for no remembering the active options, and so plasma was popping up a stupid dialogue? That exact dialogue! Well, that is now fixed, or at least that's they said, and I'm just missing the update. When we now play music, the album art, on lock screen will render correctly. And since I'm on kickoff menu, they also fixed the keyboard navigation issue. So, when we go backwards, the parent category is now pre-selected. Nobody knows who I really am. I never felt this empty before. And if I ever need someone to come on. Back in settings, and we have a modernized look on screen edges page. I'm not going to show every single panel that got an update, but I want to specially highlight two major issues with plasma hot corners. First of, there is not pressure sensitivity to trigger the hot corner, and instead there is a timeout, making that feature half useless. And even that, it doesn't really work as you can see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I remember that issue since ever. The volume slider, now provides audio feedback, only when we done dragging it, so it doesn't make a bunch of weird noises while being dragged. Something I noticed, when we enable the do not disturb, then the system sounds get muted. A very good idea! Last, and most certainly least, the Ubuntu snap icons are now properly displayed on Discover. So, that is the Flatpak Discord, that you want. And that is the Ubuntu Snap Discord, that you don't want. And I want to show you something. That's KDE me on Twitter, and I scrolled down to every 2019 tweet, and there wasn't a single reference on Flatpaks, but there were lots of references on Ubuntu Snaps. No idea why a community project is KDE, supports snaps that are locked by Canonical, but to me, only for politics, that is a strong reason to not use Neon. 
and combine that is based on Ubuntu LTS, just wow! And you believe that this is 